Welcome to the last set news. Take a top stories in crypto and bring out a bite sized pieces today. Just like a thumbnail suggests, we're going to talk about why right now it really comes down to the crypto investors, people like you and me, and we are up against the SEC. And if it wasn't for the SEC sticking their nose into everything and just messing everything up, this market would be vastly increased than what it is right now. So we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about some good news uh, uh, as far as like Ukraine legalizing cryptocurrency, also India getting into the fray uh, with more regulation positively. And then we'll talk about uh, what would happen if everything became a security and we'll talk about the celsius token and uh, some interesting information that uh, my friend alex mascioli talked about because he has had a tussle himself with the sec and finally we'll talk about uh, a little partnership between ftx and tom brady so we'll do all those things but first take a look at what's going on in the market so today hey it's not a bad day uh we're at a market cap of 2.12 trillion bitcoin price holding steady at around 46,000. Everything's just kind of just going sideways and we'll see what happens. Some people think we're due for a bear market. Some people think we're gonna trade sideways for a couple weeks and then blast off. And some people say everything's gonna go to the moon. I can't tell you what it's gonna be because I don't have a crystal ball, but I can tell you right now, statistically, if uh, what I'm gonna do actually is just hold, but statistically, if you uh, do a lot of holding, usually things work out pretty well. But uh, it is up for you to decide what you think is best for you. And of course, your goals are not my goals. So what I really want to do today is just jump right in and just talk about what the heck is going on. So I want to start off with this video. And the reason why I'm bringing this to everybody's attention is not because it's like a news flash or something like that. We all know the SEC is the SEC. I'm just going to believe it at that. But I just want to emphasize how much farther we would be if they did their job and they gave us clarity. And I'm gonna to talk to you right now. Uh, this is from uh, uh, Squawk Box. This is Rick Ryder. He's one of the CIOs for BlackRock. You know BlackRock, uh, the ones that have like almost 10 trillion of assets under management. And listen to what he says about cryptocurrency right here. Rick, you have been a proponent of, of crypto, uh, I think, within the firm, probably more so than, than many others. Where do you see that now? We talked about what, what El Salvador did this week, but it, it speaks to all the issues that you're dealing with here, which is, which is what are real rates? What's the value of money? So, so you know, that's a, it's a tr tricky subject. So first of all, I'll say the first thing I will say on crypto, you know, people describe it as a hedge or an alternative. I'm not sure it's a really great hedge. I mean, the correlation to equities, the correlation to risk assets, I'm not sure it's a great hedge. By the way, when, so when an asset moves 10 to 15% a day, really hard to hedge big organic asset pools with that as a hedge. Is it, you know, is it an alternative currency? Listen, I've said, and I've said, and I've said it with, with you, Andrew, listen, part of why I own a small piece of Bitcoin is I do think there are more people that are gonna enter that fray over time. We have a very moderate position in our portfolio. I like assets that quite frankly are volatile that have upside convexity. And I could see Bitcoin like it's done. I could see it go up significantly. But listen, I think it's volatile. I don't think it's a core asset class like, like right. bonds are or like stocks are. But I think it's, you know, to have a bit as more of a speculative tool in a portfolio. Yeah, I think, I think there's some value to that. So first of all, if this would have been 2017, this would have been laughable for the BlackRock CIO to come out and start talking about how they have a moderate position of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in their portfolio. Wouldn't have happened. And now all of a sudden, here we have a step. The same thing happened with JP Morgan. So really what's going on is this would have actually been advanced if he just would have known or other institutions would have known what is a currency in, as far as cryptocurrency and digital assets. What is a commodity and what is a security? If they would have known those things, they could have jumped in probably a lot harder. And in this video, he pretty much said all those three things. And he's like, I really don't know because the SEC is not doing their job and that is the real problem. What's really going on here is they are doing enforcement through regulation. And that is not the whole end all be all for what the SEC should be doing, but they're doing it and here we are. So that is just there to start off with. And what I really wanna get into is this piece right here. This was uh, article dropped today. SEC will stop at nothing to control the entire crypto space, says former federal prosecutor. So what's going on here let me just blow this up so you can see it. Uh, this is Phelan. Uh, his name is uh, James K. Phelan. You can follow him on Twitter. I'll link in the description below. And James Phelan is an attorney specializing in securities litigation and government investigations. And he states this, because he knows these things, the SEC will stop at nothing to control the entire crypto space. This isn't just about Ripple. 
Coinbase accuses the SEC of using intimidation tactics behind closed doors to stop the company from launching a lending program. Coinbase stated this. The SEC told us they considered Lend to involve a security, but wouldn't say why or how they've reached that conclusion. They just want us to shut it down. They're going to sue us. The SEC is also reporting, uh, reportedly investigating Uniswap. So again, what's going on here is that essentially uh, the SEC is just going, look, uh, we don't really have the... Uh, uh, everything that we should have as far as like uh, uh, clarity, but we're just going to sue you, sue the pants off you, and so just don't do it. How can you possibly do that? And this was actually uh, brought to light. Brian Armstrong, CEO of Coinbase, and he just said this in, in one of 21 tweets in a big long thread, I'll link in the description. He says, look, if we end up in court, we may finally get the regulatory clarity the SEC refuses to provide, but regulation by litigation should be the last resort for the SEC, not the first. And really what it's coming down to is he's like, look, I think we should go to court and I think we should just battle it out so we can get some clarity. And that's really what I feel it's all coming to. Now, a lot of people will say this, they'll say, you do not want to tussle with the SEC, but it's inevitable anyhow. They're going to come for you anyhow. They're like mafioso. So it's like, if you, you're going to have to stand up to them anyhow, because they're just bullies. And there's only one way to beat a bully, that's to punch them in the face. And that's really what it comes down to. Don't tell me in the comment section that I offended you because I told you to punch someone in the face. It's really, it's just a metaphor. But really what it comes down to is this. If you, if the SEC would have just taken a little bit of guidance uh, from what had been happened in the, in the past, uh, as far as like the internet, this would have all gone away. And there was this law, Section 230, which was passed in 1996, and says an interactive computer service can't be treated as the publisher or speaker of third-party content. This protects websites from lawsuits if a user posts something illegal, although there are exceptions. And this was the law that gave us the internet that said, here's a little bit of regulation, like I've been talking about on my channel forever. We're not gonna overdo it. It's like cake, a slice is okay. A whole thing will, a whole, <laughs> a whole big bunch of cake will ruin your night. If you do these things, we'll just be hands off. And that's the whole thing that it's coming down to. And then people will have their theories about why that is. But really what it comes down to is this, the SEC is just coming out and going, we're gonna do this, this, and this, and we're not gonna give you guidance, and that's how it is. So when I'm talking about these things, I want, I want you to be aware of where we could have been if the SEC just would have done their job and gave a little bit of clarity. I was a medic in the army, so I can just tell you, like, we were big on triage, right? Just, is this person gonna make it? They're not gonna make it. This one is, is critical or not. It's the same thing that they could have done over the SEC, the CFTC, and the OCC. Just go, look, this is a commodity, CFTC. This is a security, SEC, and this is a currency, Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. Just do it like that, very simple, very, very easy, and that's what could have been done. Now, if this lights a fire under your under your belt and you're in the United States, go ahead and reach out to the SEC, reach out to your US representative, reach out to your senator, and tell them what they should be doing. So that is it for that section. Let me know what you think in the comments because I'm sure I'm going to get some good ones. And let's move on to our next piece. As far as like good news, this is what U.S. should be doing so cryptocurrency doesn't pass them by. So forth, the Ukraine is more America than America. Good job, Ukraine. So what's going on here? Uh, the Ukraine adopts law on virtual assets to regulate crypto market. Congratulations, Russia. The law on virtual assets recognizes cryptocurrency as intangible goods while denying them the status of legal tender. Step in the right direction. They're giving them clarity of what it actually is. In case these assets are backed by currencies, they will be regulated by the National Bank of Ukraine, which is the country's central bank. If the underlying asset is a security or a derivative, the, na the national securities and stock market exchange will be the main regulator. Makes sense. Crypto market participants will be able to independently determine the value of virtual assets, open bank accounts to settle transactions, and seek judicial protection for associated rights. I never thought I would see the Ukraine outdo the United States for being freedom, but here we are. And uh, congratulations, because that's pretty much how it should be done, because that's what people want. You work for us, not the other way around. And that's how it should be. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Let's move on to our next piece, India. So India has been going back and forth uh, for regulation, but over the last couple of days, they've pretty much said, hey, we're gonna be, we're gonna give a little regulation and we're gonna move forward in our own Indian fashion. So India's cryptocurrency legislation will be distinct and unique. So what's going on here? Uh, Jayant Singha, I think I nailed it. Sinha is the chairman of India's parliament, Parliamentary Standing Committee on Finance. 
states it is not possible for India to adopt the crypto policies used in advanced economies. I used America and advanced economies loosely, but he states this, we have to balance stability and growth, but we recognize how important this whole area of crypto is. And then uh, this one I thought was very interesting. A former deputy governor of the Reserve Bank of India, R. Gandhi said this, crypto must be regulated as an asset or commodity in India and governed by existing laws. Once cryptos are accepted, rules governing commodity exchanges could apply and the coins could be used to pay for goods and services, which makes a lot of sense. Then automatically people can start buying, selling and holding. And this is according to a recent reports, Indian government is planning to regulate crypto assets as commodities and by use cases. Again, they've got it down pat. This was the article and they stated that the cryptocurrencies will be treated as an asset commodity for all purposes, including taxation, as per use case, payments, investment, or utility. So look, if other countries can get on board and they figured it all out, I just don't see what the problem is with the United States or they can't figure it out. But I will tell you this, uh, if you let it sleep and you let it pass by, uh, just expect all these crypto companies, all these Bitcoin mining places, all the different places, just to say, you know what? This isn't good for us and we're out of here. It happens everywhere in every country. See tax laws when you overtax people and things that happen. So let me just think about that in the comments. <laughs> That'll be good. And let's move on to our, our second to last piece. And this will go pretty fast. So I was talking to Alex Masioli, uh over an Alex, Max, Alex Masioli show. And we talked about I said, what's the nuclear option here, Alex? What if everything becomes a security? And let's just say, you know, SEC goes, all crypto is a security. And he goes, that would be very bad, Rob. And he goes, he goes, because he was head of institutional investment over at Bquant Services, traditional finance guy. And he goes, if this happens, he goes, it's not bad for us, for the people. But you have to understand for every single project out there, they were selling unregistered securities. On top of that, all the exchanges were selling unregistered securities. And I said, well, why would they do that, Alex? Why? I knew the answer, but I wanted him to say it. And he said, it's because they want money, Rob. It's because they want a ton of money and there's a bunch of money in fines. He goes, I've tussled with the SEC and I will just tell you this, every, every time you wanna do this, you just wanna pay the fine and move on. And I said, well, is it like double jeopardy? Like if, you, if they fine you, you can just move on, they can't come back. He's like, no, that's the beauty. They can come back at you again and again and again and again, again, mafioso. So I'm like, why don't we just take this to court? And just say, you know what? I'm all in. Let's get all the all the uh, lawyers that we can possibly get, all the different uh, people that we can actually stand up for this, and just go. Let's bring it in, and let's just get this out on the table and get this done now, and we can move forward and get some clarity. I know people think it's a dumb idea. Uh, I don't care uh, because, look, I've been sued before. I've talked about this on the channel, and uh, you can let people bully you for as long as you want to, or you can just stand up and go, you know what, <clears throat> if you're gonna come at me, you better come correct, because I'm gonna come as hard as I possibly can, and then we'll see where it all uh, lands when the dust settles. That's all I'm saying. Anyhow, so that was Alex's uh, uh, snippet. I was gonna get him on the show, but he was too busy going to a football game. Good for Alex, works his ass off. All right, so this I thought was interesting. Uh, Alex Mashinsky, friend of the show, Celsius thinks Cell won't receive the same SEC treatment as XRP. And there's just a couple of things. Uh, he states this, we did not determine that Cell token is a security. Mashinsky said in an interview with Coindesk. Uh, what we said is that because we're not sure what it is, and it's not clear because the regulations are not clear, what we're talk about, that we're going to file it as if it were a security. And people are like, so <clears throat> are you saying Celsius is a security? Yes, that's it. And this was back in January 15th. So I did a video on this about seven, eight months ago. On the website, you used to be able to find it when you, when you scroll down on Celsius.network. There was a thing here that said uh, SEC. It's not there anymore, but you can still find it. If you just go to sec.gov forward slash Edgar, I'll link in the description. If you put in the company name, I just put Celsius and Celsius Network popped up. There's three different things. So you got uh, DA notice, D notice of sales of unregistered securities and D notice of sales of unregistered securities. This is on July 13th. First, I was like, well, let me make sure I got the right thing. So what is filing a Form D? And that is, let me blow this up. So Form D is used to file notice of an exempt offering of securities with the SEC. The federal securities laws requires a notice to be filed by companies that have sold securities without registration under the Securities Act of 1933 and an offering made under blah, 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 whatever. A company must file this not notice within 15 days after the first sale. So when I came back here and I clicked on this, I just want you to notice that this is Celsius Network, 
United Kingdom, the last five years. Uh, first name, Alex Mashinsky, London, UK. And then you got uh, Daniel Leon, <clears throat> uh, Patrick Martin, uh, who are the rest of these guys are, and then whatever. And what it states right down here, if I keep going, type of securities offered. Click other, digital token, combination tracks. Yes, minimum investment accepted, 25,000. And then sales compensation, none and none. So really what Celsius did was pretty smart. They go, we don't know what it is. And you guys don't know either. And you can't get your stuff together. So we're just going to say as a security. And then we're going to file it with the SEC. And that's it. And that's, uh, so, I mean, as things come, come forward, I mean, maybe Celsius will be the only ones that is actually protected. But we will see. But uh, I just don't see them going through everybody and going, it's a, it's a security, it's a security, security. Uh, they could do it. And that's a lot of money, but I think what's going to happen is we're going to see snap uh, slaps on the wrist and so on and so forth. But it is really just bullying, and that's it. For, so let me just think about that that piece. I thought it was interesting that Celsius is security. And, uh, it's probably a smart move. And then lastly, I want to talk about this is a great commercial, and I'll just let you watch it and you decide if this is good for mass adoption. This is from uh, FTX, uh, Sam Bakeman Fried, genius over there, who's big into. Well, Solana, we know that. But uh, this is a great commercial uh, with Tom Brady and friends. And uh, check it out. Can I talk to you about something? Yeah, we talked about it. I got another 10 years left. Maybe 15. Not bad. This is big. What do you think? Are you in? You know what? I'm in. Let's call everyone. Hang on a minute. Oh, how dare you call this number? Okay, I'm in. Whatever. Who's that? That was my mom. Oh. Hey, Donut, don't eat that. Yo, what's up? Yeah. yeah, I'm in. Yeah, sounds good. I'm in. I'm in. Hey, Arthur, I quit. I'm in. T Bone, is the downstairs toilet again? Hello, Tom. Doggy coin? Sue, so, Mark. Are you in? I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. All right, this last one might be tough. Nah, he loves you. Probably just getting up the dentist. This guy. First, even if you wanted to come back, we wouldn't take you. Yes, you would. Yeah, yeah we, we would. would. You're right, we would. What's up? I'm getting into crypto with FTX. You in? We're providing gives 360 degree access to the crypto markets with the ability to trade everything from alts to DeFi. I believe I'm in, but still hate you. Understood. Take care. Best of the family. Is he in? Yep. Did he say he hates you? He did. Even on the phone, that guy sounds handsome. Genius. Genius commercial. Great job. A uh, little bit better than the best Voyagers with uh, Rob Gronkowski. I like this one a little bit better. And uh, so it was. So uh, that is what is going on in today. So some bad news, some good news. Depends on how you take it. And that's really what's going on. So look, uh, if you made it all the way to the end, first of all, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. All things to talk about, time sensitive. Go over everything. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.